If you look around on the internet and you try to figure out why fiber increases fat loss, you're gonna find a bunch of generic videos that say fiber fills you up, or fiber makes it so you don't eat as much, or maybe fiber attenuates blood glucose responses, and those are all valid. But we have to dig a little bit deeper. We have to dig deeper into rodent model studies. We may even dig deeper into mechanistic studies, in vitro stuff, to really understand how fiber directly influences fat loss at a cellular level. It's pretty darn intriguing. And with that, we look at a study initially that was published in the journal Obesity that took a look at CT scans of over a thousand people over a five year period of time. And they found that for every 10% increase in soluble fiber intake, there is a 3.7% decrease in visceral adipose tissue. Visceral fat is like the pot belly fat, the fat that's underneath our subcutaneous fat that surrounds our organs, the metabolically active, dangerous, inflammatory fat that is linked with so much in the way of disease and inflammation. Could these people have had their increases in fiber decreasing their visceral fat because they were just eating less? It probably did. But we also have lots of other tangential sort of pieces of evidence that help us understand the direct effect. So in this video, I'll explain the effect, but I'll also explain the kinds of fibers and things that you can do along the way. The main goal that we want here is to achieve a higher concentration of what are called short chain fatty acids. So when bacteria break down fibers, they create byproducts. Some of these byproducts are bioactive peptides, they're bioactive compounds, and some of them are straight up short chain fatty acids. They are literally short chain fats that are produced as a byproduct from these bacteria. And these little byproduct weirdos go throughout our body and do cool things. And that's where we have interesting research. So the goal is to increase these short chain fatty acids. I'm gonna tell you how to do that, but first, science. We look at the mechanism of short chain fatty acids by looking at a paper that was published in the journal Lipids, and I'm gonna read you a two sentence excerpt from this research paper that explains it all. Short chain fatty acids regulate the balance between fatty acid synthesis, fatty acid oxidation, and lipolysis. Fatty acid oxidation is activated by short chain fatty acids while de novo synthesis and lipolysis inhibited. De novo synthesis means the formation of new fat cells. Fiber and short chain fatty acids ultimately stop the formation of fat at a cellular level and influence the oxidation of it. But let's dive deeper. With this, we look at a study that was published in PLOS1. It was an in vitro study, so petri dish study, but interesting. They took a look at human muscle cells and they treated these human muscle cells with what is called acetic acid or acetate. This is a short chain fatty acid. Like we have propionate, we have acetate, and butyrate, like really important short chain fatty acids that are produced by bacteria. When they treated these muscle cells with acetate, it increased AMPK and it increased the uptake of glucose and it increased the uptake of fat into the cell and decreased the level of triglycerides. I know this is test tube stuff, but it adds up with some of the other data we'll look at as well. This could be the direct effect of short chain fatty acids from eating fiber influencing fat loss. So now we jump over to a study published in the journal Diabetes, which looked at butyrate. Butyrate is one of the most heavily studied short chain fatty acids. This was a rodent model study. When they gave mice that were diabetic butyrate, they found that there was an increase in the activity of AMPK. What this means is the mice started tapping into their stored fuel better, their onboard fuel and they had an increase in what's called PGC-1A. Remember that name, because I'm gonna come back to it in a minute. It's not important just yet. What's most important about this study is the mice that were treated with butyrate. Again, something that we just get from eating fiber. They had a 200% increase in fat oxidation. And then when they looked further, they found that these mice had more carnitine palmitoyl transferase one. This is a transport vehicle that transports fat into the cell, into the mitochondria. So they had more fat transporters and they had a down regulation of what's called PPAR gamma and SREBP. These are things that are involved in fatty acid synthesis. So they had a decrease in the ability to store and build fat and an increase in the ability to burn it and transport it. I've got more to share, but how do we increase these kinds of short chain fatty acids? What's the most bang for the buck? 
First, you want to lean into what is called inulin. Inulin feeds specific, quote unquote, butyrate producing bacteria. You're going to get inulin from leeks, you're going to get it from onion, you're going to get it from shallots, you're going to get it from asparagus, and you're going to get it from artichokes. Okay, if you cook up onions or shallots, it is a very low carb, easy way to get this inulin in. Okay, makes a big difference in butyrate. Then when it comes down to more acetate and other short chain fatty acids, so with resistant starch, things like green bananas, things like beans, things like wheat or fermented wheat would be even better, like a resistant type of wheat. And then pectin is really powerful too. So apricots and apples and guar gum. So if you see guar gum on the ingredient list of something, it's not something to run away from, it's actually pretty good. Couple this, like we've seen in some of the research with probiotics and you have a really good combination. I put a link down below, does not mean you shouldn't eat fiber, but I do think adding a probiotic in is good as well. So that link is down below for 30% off of seed, which is the probiotic that I recommend. So that is a daily symbiotic, which means it has prebiotic fibers, like some of the things I've been talking about, and it has the probiotics. So it has the fibers that feed the probiotics in a multi-stage delivery system with two capsules. So definitely recommend you check it out. You don't have to at all. There's obviously still value with this video by teaching you the types of fiber and everything like that. But that link gets you 30% off if you're in the market for a good probiotic. So that link down below this video. To kind of help explain that, like the whole short chain fatty acid thing and fiber intake, there was a study published in Carbohydrate Polymers that puts us all together. It gave subjects beta-glucans, which is a specific kind of fiber, along with a probiotic. So they combined fibers and a probiotic. They found increases in AMPK, as well as increases in carmatine palmitoyl transferase 1, and increases in hormone-sensitive lipase. So increases in the hormone that actually breaks down fat, hormone-sensitive lipase. So what is all this gobbledygook about AMPK? Like, how is this beneficial? If you cannot activate AMPK or phosphorylate AMPK, you're never tapping into your stored tissue. If I go out for a run right now, I end up in an immediate deficit and my body starts activating AMPK to say, hey, use the onboard fuel. That's what we want. So when we have this happening and we see indirect effects of fiber increasing AMPK, that means our body is better capable of shifting into utilization mode and getting out of constant storage mode, which we are in, especially in the United States. And when we see upregulation of transporters like CPT1, we know everything's moving. And when we have increases in PGC1A, we have changes in our mitochondria, changes in our health that allow us to utilize fat better. But there's one more wicked cool thing that's starting to come out. Maybe you've heard of brown fat before. Brown fat is the fat that is metabolically active and actually burns calories as heat. The more brown fat you have, the more calories you dissipate as heat. There was a study published in the journal Gut, another rodent model study, but they gave these mice straight butyrate. And when they gave them butyrate, they found that their activation of brown fat was higher. They also found that straight up, when they gave these mice that were on a high fat diet, they gave them butyrate and it prevented them from getting obese. And it also prevented their triglycerides from elevating. It increased their fatty acid oxidation and of course increased their brown adipose tissue activation. It was preventative. That's what's so wild. So does this work in humans? I can't say 100% but we have enough data to really speculate hard because that's where everything is going. We're seeing that fiber has these effects. So no matter where you stand, keto, low carb, paleo, vegan, whatever, adding fiber in is only going to help you. And if you do it in a way where it's gonna actually be true fodder for your gut bacteria by having it with as many meals as you can, by having the more soluble fiber like the psyllium, the chia, the flax, the leeks, the onions, the shallots, that's really gonna be beneficial. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.